Hey guys, welcome back to Monday Gun Day. Today we have episode 12. We are reviewing today the Walther Q5 Match SF. In particular, the standard model that does not come with a magwell or extended magazines. We didn't have access to that model, so we're just reviewing this one. And this is a pretty sweet gun. I was excited to review it. I've handled it a few times and it's a big, heavy gun and I like those things and I was excited to shoot it. So uh, let's get into a, a little bit of the history behind this gun. This is actually kind of towards the end of its evolution. Uh, it started as a PPQ, kind of. Walther came out with the PPQ as a very successful, popular handgun, and they decided to tweak it a little bit here and there and add a couple more competition-oriented features to it, and they ultimately came out with the Q5. And that was a Palmer striker-fired pistol, similar to this one just with the Palmer frame. And that was also massively successful in the competition world. And so they decided, let's come out with a steel version, make it heavier, make it more robust, make the uh, recoil impulse a little bit more pleasant, a little softer shooting, a little flatter shooting. And so they, they did that. And this is, uh, this is what they came out with. And it's an, it's an awesome gun, super smooth, super soft. And I think it's really cool. It got a lot of popularity in the competition realm and I've heard a lot of people say this is one of the most underrated competition guns out there. So it's not super new. It came out four or five years ago. I can't remember when exactly. It might have been 2019 when the, the steel frame came out but um, like I mentioned it is a very popular gun especially for the production class if you're shooting it iron sights nothing changed on it or carry optics where it is optic ready you can throw a dot on there and use it for carry optics so let's get into some of the uh specs on this gun it's pretty expensive that is probably easily the biggest downfall of this gun is the price msrp from their website is just over 1800 dollars for this specific model if you go with the pro model that comes with the magwell and extensions it's getting closer to 2k so that is pretty pricey in my opinion sweet gun but that's a lot of money and i mentioned it's heavy it is 41.6 ounces unloaded and so that is uh that's quite the hefty gun but it feels good the height is 5.4 inches which to me was kind of surprising because you look at it and you're like that's a pretty small grip but we'll get into that later. The total over, overall length is 8.7 inches with a five inch barrel. And the width is 1.3 inches at its widest part. And the total capacity for this with the standard flush magazines is 15 plus one in the chamber. So what's up with that? So that's a little bit about this gun. Let's take it out to the range and run it through our three drills and see how uh see how it shoots okay guys we're out of the range we got our clean a zone we got tape measured out to seven yards and 10 yards and we have the q5 match steel frame shooting out of the msp flex holster so that one has the attached spare magazine carrier got the x300 on here um, this right now is probably your best bet for a holster option for IWB, or you could go with the one without a spare mag. But we'll run through our standard three drills, starting with a back-to-back -back village drill at seven, then the three R3 at seven, and then a B B8 target at 10 yards. So let's get into it. And this gun is even heavier loaded which is cool uh it's nice first time ever shooting this gun and i was just so surprised by the smooth recoil impulse so hopefully that helps me in these build drills okay are you ready yes stand by oh. 
Okay, that one was, I should have called a mulligan. That was a 230, pretty ugly. I think I threw two, maybe three. Yeah, so I was all over the place on that one. Uh, bad grip initially. That one's in, that one's a line breaker, but these two are out and that's a nasty spread. So, okay, let's tighten it up, get a better grip. Okay, stand by. Okay, that was clean, uh, just a hair slower. I really had to confirm my front sight or my uh, sight picture on that first shot. Um, iron sights is definitely not my favorite, nor is it anybody's favorite. And if they say it is, they're lying to you. Uh, but okay, so not the greatest build drills, but in the 230 range, one thing I will say looking at the the ergonomics and the features of this gun running a build drill. Super smooth recoil and pulse. You can run this thing pretty flat. Uh, it's easy to shoot. And it's probably because it weighs 11 pounds. But another thing you realize when you go to draw this quickly, um, if, you haven't, if you haven't practiced this particular gun a lot is this insanely huge beaver tail. And it's fairly sharp. I feel like it kind of works against you uh, when you're going for that grip, unless you're used to it, kind of like a 2011 or 1911, you kind of got to get around that. And when you, when you get around that and you get a grip, that's real nice, high and tight, um, on the thumb side, one of those edges is fairly sharp. So it's not super comfortable, but it is what it is. Let's go to the three reload three. Set this one up to go to slide lock. I believe we are good there. Stand by. Okay, that was a 474. And I believe I dropped my last round. It just went just barely outside the A zone on the left, on the bottom side of the left corner so let's set this back up and we don't have the extended mags couldn't find them so we're just running flush mags for the spare so that inhibits the reload a little bit but the controls like the release the slide release seem fine no mag well so that's dumb but we'll run it again Double check. Okay. Stand by. <laughs> Got hung up on my shirt there. I think that was clean. 443. I think on both of those, I kind of fumbled around the, the magwell there on the reload, but that's that's fine. So this one was the one that I threw out on my first string of the 303. Everything else was clean though. So we will throw up a B8 and go back to 10 and just work on some true accuracy with these iron sights. So, okay, we got a clean B8 target up here. Goal is obviously all 10 rounds in the 10 ring and X ring for a perfect score of 100. Here we're looking at the sights and the trigger and just how accurate we can be. 10 yards. So sights and trigger. Let's see how it goes. Ten yards or 30 feet. Ten rounds. I think I threw one high and I think that was 
all me. Okay, so maybe too high. Uh, that one is probably out, could be a line break. Um, that one's definitely out, but the rest are in the tin or breaking the line. A couple in the X, four, I believe, in the X. So we'll give that a score of a 98 or 99, depending on how you read that one. If you think it's breaking the line, that's a 99. So pretty good, pretty good. Not, not great. One thing that uh, is, is good, it's a pro and a con. Okay, it's this front sight post. It's pretty thin, but the fiber optics huge, which gives you a lot of light, gives you a bright red dot out there. But if you're going for real precise, fine work, uh, accuracy, it's not the great, the greatest. Well, not, not my preference at least. And, uh, but the rear sight's adjustable, so that's cool. And the trigger's pretty good. It is not as good as some of the triggers that are coming out of the box these days. But I do remember Walther bringing out these blue triggers uh, in their match series of guns just being pretty good. A lot better than most of the other ones stock as is from the factory, you know, so so pretty good. So, all right, there's those drills. Let's uh, head back to the armory. We'll tally up the score and give you guys our totals for this gun. Okay, so back to evaluate this gun. Shooting this at the range was pretty enjoyable. This is a pretty cool gun and it's kind of bittersweet reviewing this gun because of a couple things about it that you're gonna see in the score. So this one was kind of hard for us to kind of go through our list of 10 categories that we review this gun on. Um, it did really well on some and it did very poorly on some. So that's going to be reflected in the score, but that's just the way it is. So starting off, our first category is cost. This one is expensive, costs a lot. So it's getting a score of a five. It's one of the lower scores we've given a firearm, um, but that's because it's near $2,000 new. I'm sure you can find better deals out there or used options, probably closer to $1,500, but still an expensive gun. And I just don't, uh, don't know why it's so expensive. Moving on to ergonomics. This is, uh, feels nice, feels nice. There are some issues. So it's getting a score of a seven. I do like the ergonomics. The grip feels good despite having large hands and this grip just looks kind of small. It feels good. There is one issue though, as if, and that is if you get real high and tight on there, like you should, when while you're shooting it during long streams of fire, this edge of this extended beaver tail, is kind of sharp. It starts to dig into your, your knuckle a little bit. Didn't like that, but the rest, the controls, the slide release, the mag release, it's got these uh, serrated kind of vents here that help with manipulation. So, I mean, besides that, it's pretty good. So that's, that's why it got seven, despite some of those issues in the grip. But if you have smaller ha hands, that might not be as big of an issue. Next is trigger. And I remember when this gun came out and they started putting these blue triggers in, these Walthers, I was very impressed with them. It's a good, good trigger straight out of the box. No work done to it. Uh, definitely could be better. It's getting a score of an eight. I liked it and it shot well and you can shoot very accurately with this, um, but it could, could be two points better. So eight. Next we have bore axis and this is good, not great. Kind of pretty decent. Uh, it's getting a score of seven. That isn't so much of an issue because of the weight of this gun and just a smooth recoil impulse. It's, it's not something you really think about much. So getting a score of a seven on that one. Moving on to sights, also getting a score of a seven. They're good sights, don't get me wrong. And the rear sight is adjustable for windage. Um, and I believe elevation too. But the front sight is where, in my opinion, it kind of lacked. The, it has a super thick fiber optic, which can be good in certain situations, but for getting real precise stuff, it's not, it's not great. I would prefer it to be a little bit thinner, smaller fiber optic, um, because at 10 yards, it covers up pretty much the whole X and 10 ring on your target there. Um, so less 
less of a sight picture than what I want. On to aftermarket support. This is getting a pretty good score of an eight. Since it's been out for a while, there are a lot of cool options for barrels, triggers, controls, magwells, extended mags, base pads, sights, all that stuff, you name it. Tons of aftermarket support. And that's pretty natural when you start talking about popular competition guns. Um, it's just naturally you get companies making tons of stuff for them. So that's, that's cool. Also, um, holsters. Check out the MSP Flex holster or the standard MSP Pro series for this gun in particular. Throw a light on there and carry it in one of these holsters and it's, it's pretty nice. Next we have round capacity. This is a big, heavy gun. Um, however, it comes with 15 round magazines. So I don't know why but that's a big oof in my opinion. Just so big and heavy, but then you're like, this has the capacity of a Glock 19. It seems, it's interesting. Bold move there, Walther. Uh, I don't like it. So for this category, it's getting a score of a four. It's a big gun. I want to uh, quickly just compare this to another gun we've reviewed in the series that is similar, the Canik SFX Rival. We didn't review the steel frame, but as far as the rest of the gun is concerned, it's very similar to this uh, Q5 Match SF. And if you look at the dimensions, this gun is only 0.3 inches shorter than the SFX Rival. But the SFX Rival standard capacity magazine is 18 plus one. So they're about the same height, really, really, really close, but there's three extra rounds in the other one. So it makes me wonder why this one only has 15. Moving on to serviceability, just like with all, pretty much all modern uh, striker fired handguns, the takedown and the serviceability is very simple. This one, you just lock the slide all the way to the rear, show you, flip up this, Flip up this little lever, release the slide, make sure there's no mag, and then send it on home. And then the opposite is how you put back there. Super simple. Um, so, and and lots of parts and internals that you can find fairly easily. You know, it's 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 gained popularity in the years that it's been out. So it's getting a score of an eight value. So this is taking into consideration everything that the gun comes with and its cost. So value for me isn't great because it's expensive and doesn't come with a whole lot. I don't believe it comes with any optic plates and it only comes with three 15 round magazines. So uh, value is getting a score of a five. And then last but not least is cool factor. And this one's getting an eight for me. I think it's a pretty cool gun. I like big guns. I like heavy guns. This is both of those. Uh, I think it looks decent. Um, and just the way it shoots adds to the cool factor. It's, it's very soft, smooth recoil impulse. And I, I enjoyed shooting it. So it's cool in that sense. What's not cool is the cost and the 15 round max, but the other stuff maybe outweighs that for me. So getting a score of an eight. Uh, total score for the Walther Q5 Match SF is a 67. So that's kind of what I was uh, referring to earlier when I said this one was a hard one to review because there's a lot of cool things about it, but a lot of negative things about it. Uh, out of the 12 guns we've reviewed in this series, this is the lowest score. And I know that's going to bring some hate and it might be a little bit of a hot take for you guys, but the way we have this scoring system set up, if a gun just doesn't have good value, it's too expensive, things like that, it's really going to lower the score. So I would have liked to have seen it higher. I like this gun, I think it's cool, but it's too expensive. Uh, round capacity isn't quite there. So um, take that for what it is. Uh, and as, as always, let us know in the comments section what other guns you'd like to see us review, what you thought of our score on this one, because I know you guys will. And also stay tuned because we might have uh, some more newer Walthers coming up 
soon to review. So turn on those post notifications. And as always, stay strapped, stay safe, and we'll catch you next time. <laughs>